Hey, hey, Wally, I, I, I was uh, on the ice with Yuhani when Tom, he came down, and the one thing that struck me, what he was talking about with receiving passes was to hold the hands out and pull the puck in. I think that's the, the one skill the little kids don't get taught. So they got their hands by their body, and that the puck's just bouncing off the stick. Yeah, and I, I would totally agree, and I would also say, you know, Again, there's no absolutes in hockey. Yeah, hockey is a random game, but you need deliberate practice to acquire the skill. Um, you just so some basic passing drills are just fine, especially at uh, younger ages, where they can you can help them acquire those skills and then move to random passing. If you can't do the skill, then you can't can't do it randomly. Uh, as quickly or as well, I, I don't think anyway. It'll just take you longer to learn, and some people will never learn. I, uh, I'm i trying to uh, attach something to the chat. I'm not sure how to do it, but I'm going to make an attempt. Uh, it's the four-page drill sequence that you might need an explanation of because I use it at coaching clinics to teach coaches how to teach passing in their minds and understanding. Coaches can't do it. They just do the drill. They, they don't teach the thinking of the drill. So it's a four drill sequence. There might not be enough explanation in there, but if anybody wants to call me about that one, it's one in girls hockey Calgary um, at the U13 level, maybe too advanced, but at U15, definitely a sequence that I would do. And I just outlined a sequence of drills for hockey sense, which is passing. Got to know where to go, when to go, how to support the puck. That's the problem with passing. So it isn't the structure of your breakout. The structure of your cycling and your low zone control. It's the conceptualization of awareness and decision making uh, in real game situations. So that's sort of the theory of it. And I'm in the middle of it because I've just been asked to formally mentor girls hockey Calgary at the U13 and U15 levels. And I'm putting together, I've put together two packages one on teaching hockey sense and the one i put on yesterday was teaching compete so compete means free puck races free puck battling puck protection um, and the idea of comfort with contact and wanting to battle and compete which sometimes young ladies are hesitant at so um if 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 uh, Brent, I believe I've added you to the Sharks email list. There's about a hundred coaches on there. So, and I, the people that are on here, I can will include these girls hockey Calgary things as I produce them on a, a daily basis. But I'm trying to great. I'm trying to work with. Uh, uh, two spring hockey teams coached by the same coach, an ex-NHLer, uh, who's not a teacher, but a great coach, a motivator, and a pressure fast speed guy who needs this kind of um, help in terms of decision making, because the game is going to strictly be a no you know, a north-south game with dumping in, dumping out, pressure, 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 and the, the game isn't that anymore. It still matters. It's still important. But you've got to learn to possess the puck. Possession is the game today. Regaining possession and transitioning is the reality of the game within a game. So that's just my theory on it. But at, at Wally, I was when I was watching the Oiler come back uh, in game four there, you know, they were down 3 nothing after the first in uh, in L.A., um, there are some fantastic examples of, you know, five player offensive zone movement, uh, probably as good, a good as I've ever seen, you know, Tampa and Colorado are extremely good at it. 
Um, but there are a couple of sequences about halfway through that second period where it's like, wow, you know, just five guys all over the offensive zone, making it real tough uh, for L.A. to defend. Uh, it, was, it was really good on the possession end of things. You're muted. You're muted, Wally. The playoffs in the NHL are a laboratory. And, you know, kids aren't just going to suddenly start to do that. Um, but if you let them play games, a lot more small area, they have to make decisions while they play games, and they'll develop their skills. Um, the game will teach. I think Tom's methodology of let the game teach and varieties of games with special rules, uh, they're going to develop those skills. But it's only in the game that the decision making of when you're going to do something and when you're teammates going to get open and be available uh, that's quite simply what what it's all about <laughs>